problem down in turn number one was Danny Drynan. Now this, we weren't sure, had anything to do with the temperatures, but for some reason, he got into the wall on the outside of turn number one with a very heavy impact with the left side of the car. We only have video after he lost control of the car. Of course, the report is that he is okay, but a very scary incident indeed in turn number one. This was a brutal hit. The, uh, the meters on board that the record impact recorded two impacts in excess of 100 Gs. The checkered flag lies just ahead as Buddy Lazier takes the checkered flag and wins the Indianapolis 500 Firestones win since 1971 and and a crash on the finish big crash on the finish of the race Salazar looks like Sam Pedri as he was crossing the finish line taking the checkered Roberto Guerrero lost control spins there and he gets up in the look at Sam Pedri Whoa, I've never seen that red car get up like that into the fence. He's upside down still right there. Now he hits Salazar. He's still upside down, and it flips him back over. Unbelievable. Unbelievable accident right there. Another look at it. Here comes Guerrero. Oh, he loses it. He just loses it. Whoa. Whoa. Up so high over the top of the camera. And those two guys were, look at that, the force and that just took those unbelievable actions. Brand new chassis. We got a yellow trouble. Control. Oh, big upside down. Wow. Yellow flag will come out on that one with nine to go. The yellow the wheel looks Guerrero. like Guerrero. Let's hope he's okay. Well, that was Greco. Well, he slowed Suddenly dramatically, slowed and Roberta didn't quite catch it quick enough, and uh, then he caught some other stuff. Yeah, and that road just starts flipping it. You know, Nellis Air Force Base, uh, home of the uh, demonstration team, the Air Force Thunderbirds, right across the street. Big <laughs> travel, big travel down. coming off of two. Oh, my goodness, Ari Lion Dyke. Lion Dyke. Flips the car upside down. You can see him He's moving, moving around, though. That car was sliding upside down, but his oh. head wasn't on the surface. Look Kay. at him, still working on the wheel. Here we see a, a seal looks like just jumped sideways. Lion Dyke had no place to go again. But again, these cars are just jumping sideways coming off of turn two. Look at the, out, the right side tires. Still have a lot of momentum. Problem on the back straightaway. Bunch of cars back straight away and wheels flying. Number 21, Roberto Guerrero and 77, uh, Stefan Gregoire. Remember last year here when Guerrero touched wheels with another car and tumbled down the back straightaway. Eddie Cheever, the Indy winner against the inside wall in the back straightaway, and heavy damage to the left front of Cheever's car, as you see from the onboard oh, camera. Again, big traffic. The black car gets right in the back of Stefan Gregoire. That's Donnie Beachler. 98 Beachler. Tires, wheels climbing up all over everybody. These cars just, with open wheel cars, you just can't be climbing on top of each other. Watch the black car. Again, he's got a head of speed. He oh. gets right into the back of Stefan Gregoire, the blue car. He spins him around. You know, drives over a wheel and gets him upside down. Tom, I think something happened in front of them. But there, everybody is out of the car and okay. Well, that's Beachler there yep. in the white. And his car was upside down. Mario Andretti was looking forward to a ride of a lifetime at the Speedway today. The 63-year-old walked away from one of the most dramatic crashes in history. Here it is. Andretti was on the final run of the day, only seconds behind Kenny Breck in turn one. Breck crashed coming out of the turn. Mario came up on the accident while running at 220 miles an hour. And he hit some debris. And then he held on. He rode out one spectacular crash. Mario walked away with only the, a nick on his chin about the size of a penny. That won't be something that Brian Beinhardt... Oh! Yeah. And Weldon upside down. Well, this changes the whole complex of the race. Paul, we're going to have another restart. Dan Weldon is a lucky guy. This is going to set the stage for an interesting end of the race. Not that it wasn't going to be. Just 
entering into the turn a little bit low, got into the wall, got some air underneath the front of the car, just like Mario Andretti did back in April when he was testing here for his son's team, Michael. Get a little bit of a wiggle right mid-turn. Car goes up towards the wall. He's lost control. He's just a passenger now, and he gets that little bit of air underneath there, and away it goes. Rice surprised him, Paul. Now both of them don't kept it under control. Oh, oh, and this time, no. That's Rice upside down on the back stretch. He flipped up, got the car sideways. It got nosed higher in the air. Hey, buddy, can you hear us there? Here's what happened. Just at the beginning of your screen, you can see that he got his left rear touched by the right front of Darren Manning. As soon as the two tires touch, Paul, the rubber, then it just connects quickly and sends the car into the air. See, Buddy was just starting on his way down off of the turn, probably did not know that Darren was there. Probably more so on Buddy's line fault there, coming down a little bit too quickly as we watch from the rear section here right now. You can see that Buddy being on the right-hand side just started to bring the car down to protect that inside line and ended up connecting with Darren Mann. This for the 500, Paul Dana losing control into the wall, into the hospital, spinal fracture may need surgery. Debris on the track, Sam Hornish hits some debris and does that. And amazingly, Hornish walked away. He is not hurt, aside from a bruised knee.